and we're live. Okay. Aaron, thank you so much for uh, for coming on, for trekking in from from Jersey. Thank you to both you and Fatima yeah, uh, for exactly. making the trip over to Brooklyn. Happy to have you on the show. Um, told you a few seconds ago, there's a little tidbit, a little story, a little something the world doesn't know about you, <laughs> even though Fatima kind of blew up your spot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can I spoil it? Yeah, explain. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I look dead in the camera. Sounds like Aaron got absolutely hammered after her fight at MSG against Molly McCann. Correct or incorrect? Uh, correct. <laughs> are we th are we talking like tequila? What's the drink of choice? Mm, yeah, it was tequila. tequila and Bacardi. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like we're talking just ripping straight shots. Yeah, I took like like champagne glasses full of tequila. <laughs> champagne glasses full of tequila. Yeah. Like how many? Uh, well, it was one full one, and then probably like one or two other ones. But yeah. when you have when you've been and then in a bunch camp of shots, people are buying me shots, and then oh. they bought a bottle for the table of Bacardi. <laughs> That's where the Bacardi came. Yeah. Wait, where'd you guys go? Uh, I think PhD. I think it was you don't called. remember. You're no, no, I, I <laughs> yeah, I only remember from my friends telling me after. <laughs> so, okay, so we had champagne glasses full of shots. Yeah. You 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 didn't throw up. No, I threw up multiple times. Oh, it was yeah, like yeah. that. It, it was, was like that. Yeah, it was like, yeah, maybe one or two less shots I wouldn't have. They were trying to get me to take more shots. The team would kind of stop me. Um, she wrote but, one. But um, <laughs> once we got back to the hotel, then I was, yeah, I was throwing up. Damn. Yeah, yeah. It was fun until then. It, I went spinning, spinning well, so bad. Well, wait, also it's like you're in camp for a couple months. Yeah. So you're like clean. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything, I imagine. Yeah. And then, so the alcohol tolerance got to be extremely low. Yeah. So even, I'm sure after like one fat shot, you're already feeling it. Oh, yeah. Like, cause I, I mean, obviously, like, I did like an eight week camp, no drinking or anything, like eating clean. I was in super good shape. And then I think, cause I was home and all my friends and my, I'm not used to, like, I've been fighting in Vegas a lot. Oh, right. So in the Apex, so, like, a lot of people have didn't come out. So for MSG, it was so nice having like all my friends and family. So I think I was really comfortable and then just went really hard after. Yeah. So you don't remember anything from after? I remember. No, I, I definitely I remember. But um, but I remember feeling real sick after. I remember the next day I had to go to like a birthday party, and they're like, "Oh, do you want something to drink?" And I was like, yeah. "No." Like the, the thought of it made me like nauseous. Well, also, well, at least you weren't too beat up. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I think that's why I kind of went even hard because I was like absolutely fine. Like I it would have been it would have been bad if you were both hungover and just completely beat up. Yeah, that'd be pretty rough. But I was I didn't even eat like one shot, so I was like totally fine. What's the what's the meal after after the MSG fight before you uh, get hammered? Yeah, we went to Tao downtown and oh. I had like two cocktails there oh. and then started right. taking shots. So yeah, it was a lot of a lot of mix. Yeah, the mixing was bad too. Did Fatima hold your hair back when you were thrown up? My hair is still braided, okay, so good. thankfully it was okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she was there though. <laughs> Damn, she re she is a real one for that. Was it? Were your parents there? Uh, uh not at the club. Not at no, no, thank God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, you were. Did you open up the main card? Where were you on uh, the? No, I was a little further into the prelims, I think. Right, I so exactly. I was there. I uh, I was way up, but I I remember. Well, obviously, remember your fight. Yeah. I remember. I heard you talking about it on some other podcast. Um, you know, because there was a lot of crowd support for Molly, which is annoying, mm -hmm. considering you're like the local. F but yeah. you know, people love Molly, and then you just kind of came in and took her took her shine did yeah. you feel like going into that fight it was going to go exactly as planned oh uh, yeah I did. I did yeah I definitely expected to dominate the f that fight the way I did um yeah I knew Molly was known but it wasn't necessarily because of her skill she just has a big personality and you know she yeah. has some flashy wins and stuff like that but um but I knew my skill at that was like a far superior so I knew I'd be able to go in there and do that how much in fighting because to her credit right somebody like Molly McCann has a big as you're saying audience fan base people love her and so sometimes like this is just my opinion and that's why i want to hear your take is the aura of a fighter can sometimes overwhelm other fighters like i i kind of feel like even like connor and aldo that's kind of what happened it was like connor just took over the arena and i think probably froze aldo in a lot of ways even though he landed a great punch yeah. but like do you feel do you feel that that's real or fake or do you have to just like specifically focus when you know the crowds let's say against you and you have somebody who's got this big presence like a Molly McCann um does that play any kind of role <clears throat> into the game plan um I mean for me not so much because I, I know that I could deal with that it doesn't bother yeah. me I think for some fighters that's definitely uh something that wears on them mentally because I 
I feel like obviously the UFC is their, like their industry, their brand. They want to make it seem bigger than these fighters have a lot of popularity. So the, the crowd's like all against you when you're coming out. But none of it matters when you're in there. You know, I think a lot of people let that get to them and they let it get to like their nerves and, you know, how they're feeling. Um, because remember, none of it matters when yeah. once they're locked in there with you, they have to deal with you. I think it was also like a weird matchup choice that the UFC went with because I think that in a lot of ways they want to build up both you and Molly mm -hmm. individually. Did yeah. you, was that the first person that they had offered you for that fight specifically? Uh, yeah, it was the first person. Yeah, it was only, and then the fight stayed so that it wasn't offered to anybody else. But uh, yeah, it was just Molly from MSG. I mean, I guess it made sense because, you know, uh, in New York, there's a lot of, I guess, like English and Irish fans. So yeah. I, I know she'd like bring them to MSG. Do you, and I was taking a look at the rankings earlier. Um, I mean, comparatively to everybody else in the top five, you're years younger. Um, does it, has the age factor ever really like played any type of role mentally for you? I mean, you're like significantly younger than the rest of the top. Yeah girls in your division um no not for me I mean I know they'll have experience on me just because they're a little bit older and they've been in it longer um but if they're not learning from that experience then it doesn't really matter like I know every time I fight I'm trying to learn from it right um so even if they do have experience if they're not trying to like gain something from it it's not going to help them like at what point in time did you know that you were quite good <laughs> um like as a professional or as like as a let's say when you were younger and then also okay. as a professional when you felt like I'm finally here. Okay. Um, I would say when I'm younger, probably like uh, maybe like 12, 13, because I started competing in like women's tournaments, like in grappling, things like that. And I'd be like winning them. And I was like literally just a teenager. So I knew I was pretty it's good. not even a teenager. That's like a preteen. Yeah. Like about, I think, yeah. But maybe 12, I might have even won some, but like 13, 14, I know I was definitely like winning divisions, I remember. Um, so I knew then that I definitely had potential, like if I wanted to, and I like followed through with it. Um, and you know, I feel like as a pro, I always had confidence. I, I, I knew I started young, so I knew I had to like grow and like learn right. in it. Cause I obviously always wanted to fight MMA, but I couldn't do it till I was 18. So I had to gain some experience in it. Um, but yeah, I feel like every fight I kind of gained experience and, uh, felt more comfortable. I think like by my fight with, um, Miranda Maverick, I felt so much more comfortable. Like I felt like a real pro and I felt comfortable like in the UFC and at that level. And then winning that fight the way I did, I think that was another moment where I was like, oh, like, I can do this. What is, like, describe it for people who haven't fought, what does feeling comfortable in the octagon actually feel like as opposed to feeling uncomfortable? Yeah, so um, I would say feeling uncomfortable is, like, the fight feels really quick. You kind of, like, the lights seem super bright and everything mm -hmm. feels like, I feel like the walkout feels like forever. The fight feels super quick. You don't remember, like, anything that happened. It's like you're almost, like, blacking out in there. Um, I think being comfortable is like I get in there and I'm like, oh, like I feel like I've been there a million times, right. you know, and like everything feels like a normal speed. The fight feels normal. I can think through the fight. Um, and I just honestly feel like I'm training. I almost feel like I'm sparring as hard as I can, you know, like it doesn't feel like something different than what I do on a weekly basis. Did MSG or the Apex feel like a bigger stage? Because I know because I've been to the Apex for multiple events mm -hmm. and because it's so fucking quiet you're like yo this is scary like it's kind of i wonder if that's the same thing for fighters um it's like a weird it's like a weird intimidating feeling um you know i, I feel like with the apex the one thing that i do always remember is that you can hear coaches crystal clear yeah. there is nobody there it's yeah. like dead even like i was the main event last time and i mean there was more people than the other times i fought at the apex but it's still relatively like very quiet compared to like fighting at msg or fighting at t-mobile um so I feel like that's one of the biggest things and it just feels so, it is pretty like, it's almost like intimate. Like that fight yeah. feels like personal because it's just you two and there's like barely no one else there and you kind of like know what the stakes are and everything. Um, so I feel like the Apex is just like super personal. It's like, did you understand when you're at MSG, how, do you, are you thinking on the walkout how big MSG is or that you're at MSG? Um, no, I feel like... I don't know, because when you're walking through the tunnel, I mean, you see the people that are right there. Right. Um, but it's honestly kind of hard to see everything else because the cameras are right in your face. Right. The lights are right there. So it's kind of hard to see everything else. And plus, I'm so focused. Like, I'm literally walking out to fight. So I'm, like, super focused on that. Um, I guess the only difference is that it is a little harder to hear coaches and you hear the crowd. But I feel like with MSG, I kind of, like, the crowd was silent whenever I was, like, on top of Molly. So yeah. they kind of <laughs> almost reminded me of the Apex. They were silent until, like, she would get her arm out. Then they start screaming. Then I pinned her arm again. And then they were, like, silent. Um, so I feel like, yeah, you, you hear the crowd more. 
they're in your face when you're walking out. Um, but everything else is the same. And like when you were fighting Molly, because I remember thinking too that I could have been stopped earlier or at yeah. least like for you, it kind of felt probably like, what else do I have to do here? Yeah. Right. I mean, and she's tough too. Yeah, no, she's super tough. I mean, she wasn't tapping. She was still moving. Um, but I know I hit her with so many unanswered punches, like so many. And I could just tell at a certain point that the ref wasn't going to stop it from that. Um, so that's kind of why I transitioned to this mission. Do you have you always kind of felt this confident in your skills, if that's a fair assessment? Uh, I, I would say so. I feel like I've always kind of had like a. I think that's why I was able to compete well. I feel like I'm always pretty calm and like confident in what I could do. It's definitely grown throughout the years. Like I haven't been as confident as I am now um, just because I had to build experience in it. But um, but yeah, I mean, I've always been pretty confident. I think that's why I've been able to like compete the way I have. Do you feel like, because in a lot of ways, right, for a lot of people, they peak in, a, in their careers probably around 30 or so. For a lot of uh, MMA fans that know you and your your skills that's a scary prospect considering you're still oh, you have a birthday soon actually i saw that yeah you next know. literally a week from today happy early yeah. birthday thank you um you know that right now you're 23 you'll be about to be 24 that like you know six seven years from now that's that's for a lot of women that's probably quite concerning no i mean like for you yeah. does that excite you that you could get that much better in in this amount of time and then still be in your prime when you when you've gotten that much better and you're already at the top right now? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm always trying to progress. I don't really care how old I am. You know, it's always yeah. like the goal. Um, and, you know, I feel like it's nice being at this level, this point in my career already, because I know I have six, seven years in this like point. I'm already so close to a title and I want to hold that title for as long as I can. Um, so it does feel good to be at this point. No, I'm at this level and no, I have still have time to improve. Speaking of title obviously everybody and their mom has asked you about the title i imagine but uh did you feel like the alexo grasso upset victory brought you closer to a title shot or farther away if they give valentina the immediate rematch i think it's definitely further because yeah. valentina was super dominant so i'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to do the rematch do you kind of hope that valentina wins that well, then they might trilogy it. Uh, oh, I was just—I was literally just gonna say that. I Jesus. hope Valentina loses again, to be <laughs> honest, and um, just so Grasso can win. I'll probably have to fight between then, win my fight, and then get to fight. That'd be like obviously the quickest version. I mean, no matter what happens, I know I'll win that title. Um, but I know that's probably like the quickest path. Yeah, like there's like it's like a weird thing. I'm not even saying this because you're in front of me. Like it kind of feels obvious that you're gonna win the title. Not like, you know. I hate when people say that, but let's yeah. just say that. Like, but a lot of people feel that way. Is it is that an extra burden or a pressure even for yourself, like hearing that? Because it's easy for like you know dorks like me and whoever to say that, yeah. but I'm not the one fighting. You know, like yeah, at the end of the day, you still have to fight and you still have to get in there and still have to to win the fight. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like a added pressure or no? Oh uh, no, not really. I feel like from a realistic standpoint, I get why people say that because I am 23. I'll be 24. Um, and I'm so close already. And it's still like, I still have years in the game if I want to. So it's like, even if I didn't win it my first try, I'm definitely going to win it again. You know what I mean? So there's, I feel like there's so much time for me to win it. Um, so it makes sense that everyone thinks it'll be a champion. I think it, and I like that added pressure. I, I always put that on myself. So I don't mind when other people do. Do you set like a, a like time frame on when you want to be champ by? Yeah, you know, I never actually did that. I feel like the only time frame thing I put on myself was I always wanted to be like pro when I was 18 because I was like, oh, I want to be pro as soon as I can. So I have as much time being yeah, a professional yeah. as possible. Um, but, you know, things take time. You can get hurt. Things can happen or like things like this. How like I didn't know Alexa was going to win. Now it's going to take longer. So I try not to put like arbitrary goals. It's like I know as long as I stay on the track I am, it'll come quicker. I mean, I'm five fights in the UFC and I'm pretty close to getting a title fight. So mm. that's quicker than most. So I feel like as long as I kind of stay on that path that it'll come. How do you feel like you match up, either, I mean, against both Alexa and Valentina? Yeah, I mean, I see myself winning that fight uh, against either of them. Honestly, I mean, however I need to. Like, how do you, why do you think Valentina has been so dominant and you would be, I mean, in a lot of ways, like Tyler Santos exposed, in my mm -hmm. opinion, the most effective route to victory mm -hmm. over Valentina. But do you see yeah. it as, and that's your, your strength, right? Yes, yeah. Like, do you feel... Do you feel like there's one or the other that would be an easier matchup? Um, you know, I think both girls are very talented in their own way. I feel like 
Valentina is a little, she's different sense that she kind of, she fights the exact same way every time. I think that's why Grasso had so much success with what she did. Cause like even how Grasso like took her back and you see she drilled mm -hmm. that a million times cause she knew Valentina was yeah. gonna do the exact same move, doesn't set it up. Um, so I feel like Grasso would maybe be a little tougher in her own way that her team's smart and they make good game plans. Um, and then Valentina is just very sharp at what she does. And even though everybody knows it, it still has worked on most people. Um, so I think they would both bring their own challenges. For you, do you feel like you're, how do you like prep for people that are going to prep for the, because you have a very defined and solid advantage, you know, in the grappling and, and on the ground, knowing that people are going to drill that 10 times harder preparing for you mm -hmm. like do you feel like it's one of those situations that you're just so much better than anybody like kind of like a Khabib type vibe where yeah. like everybody knew what Khabib was going to do but they mm -hmm. couldn't stop it do you feel like it's that or do you feel like your your game is over is evolving overall that you're more dangerous everywhere and so it's kind of hard to just drill the ground game to to prepare for you uh, I definitely feel like my game is dangerous everywhere and in a sense, I do feel like it's almost could be made a sense. It's not just like you have one move. Like, no, I can yeah. chain everything. I can chain my takedowns. I can chain my jiu-jitsu. So there's not any one thing you can train to try to beat me. Like, I'm going to counter and I'm going to keep moving. And you're not going to be able to beat me in those transitions or in those scrambles. Um, and even the striking, I'm, I'm building building up on it. I feel more confident in it. So I feel like anywhere the fight goes, I'd be I'd be good. Do you feel – could you make 115? Ooh, no, I don't, I don't think so. I, I'm just going to stay at 25. <laughs> Could you, would you, if you win the title at 25, would you go up to 35 and try to double champ it? Um, no, I wouldn't write it off. Um, I feel like I'd want to solidify myself at 25 for a little bit. And then, you know, if the opportunity came and it made sense, maybe I'd do that. Like realistically, damn, if you're champs soon-ish, it's a lot of years to, that you can defend. It is a lot of years. You, you could probably break Valentina's record, not start getting ahead of ourselves here, but... <laughs> I mean, what's yeah. her record? She's like I think seven. she had seven. I think that was going to be her eighth because she was going to oh, finish her rubies. Ruby, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then she would have had to get a new belt. Yeah. That's a good problem to have. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I think what's – like from your perspective, do you think that she is just – was head and shoulders – was was really, really, really good or it was just that everybody else was just not anywhere close? Like – um, I feel like she's – she was she's very, very good. Yes. You know, she's very good at what she does. Um, I think the girls coming up are definitely better. Like, I feel like right. the new generation of like, I'm May, I feel like, and I feel like also the girls that fought her before, some of them just seemed a bit intimidated by right. fighting her. Right. Um, and you can kind of see that in their fight. Like, they didn't fight the same as they usually do. Um, and, you know, she's just super sharp at what she does and she kind of made it work for a couple. I mean, it's similar to like, like a Ronda Rousey or something. She's super yeah. sharp at what she does. It works for a while. You don't change. And then somebody's going to eventually like kind of catch on to it. I think that's why you kind of always need to be evolving. And I think that's kind of maybe what's different with like the new generation coming up. Even you saw with like Alexa, how she kind of like adjusted her game to beat Valentina. Um, and that's gonna be something you'll see more often. It'll kind of like level up everybody's game. Does it, was Valentina somebody that you looked up to when you were coming up the ranks? Um, she's someone I always look to fight for sure. Right. I don't know if I, I, I don't think I'm much of like a fan in that sense. I think especially girls in my own division, I always like, oh, like I want to yeah. fight them. Even Alexa's someone I always kind of wanted to fight too because I know she fought in Invicta and she's been someone that's been in the game for a long time. Um, so she's someone I always had my eye on. And I think what well, was quite impressive too because nobody really expected Alexa to have that type of ground game where I mean submit Valentina. Mm -hmm. Does it, does that, serve, when you see things like that, does it serve as an extra reminder that like, you have to be mind your P's and Q's everywhere with every single fighter because you never like who would have thought Alexa Grasso would have submitted Valentina Shevchenko in the fourth mm -hmm. round of a fight, right? Yeah, um, I feel like I don't know. I feel like sometimes in MMA people try to always pin fighters as like a striker, or just right. a grappler. But I mean, I've watched Alexa fight. I knew she her ground game was decent. She has takedowns. You know, she's grappled other girls, and it's not like she had nothing there. I think everyone always wants to like paint people as one way. Right. Like they'll try to paint me like I only know how to grapple or paint her like she only knows how to strike. That's that's not true. So I know with anybody, you have to mind everything everywhere you are do you ever let people what especially mma fans uh what they say get to you does it ever get to you no because i know they don't know me you know what i mean like they don't know how i'm training or like what my life's like or anything so like anything they say is just out of like what they think what they can see from the outside do you do you feel like the 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 aaron that's the fighter is similar to like the aaron the person like you know when we're talking when we're talking fighting, it's like oozing with confidence and rightfully so. Like there's no reason you shouldn't be. But like, do you do you feel like that translates into how you are as a as a human? 
Uh, yeah, I would say I'm pretty confident as a person too outside of fighting. Um, I think people maybe think I'm a little bit meaner or colder than I am like in my real life uh, just because I am like that in fighting. Uh, but I mean, it's different. You have to flip the switch and you're literally, you're both going in there trying to like kill each other, you know? So you kind of have to be like that. Um, but I'm definitely a little bit nicer outside the gauge. Do you feel like, <laughs> yeah, it's always, it always blows my mind. Like whenever I have uh, fighters on the show and I try to tell people this, like that don't follow mixed martial arts, mm -hmm. you guys are like some of the most respectful, I mean, martial, martial arts in general are all based around respect because some like the nicest people and it always blows my mind because i'm like you guys like go in there and like fucking go at it you know <laughs> yeah. it's like a. do you feel like the active flipping of the switch when you walk into the octagon oh yeah i definitely do i feel like when i'm in the locker room i'm definitely like when i'm warming up and then when i have to get ready to walk out there i definitely feel like different i mean it's like it's a feeling I know. It's funny when I think about if, if whenever I have to retire, I feel like that's a feeling I'll miss, like kind of like getting ready to go out there. Um, retire? We can't even talk about yeah. retirement. No, I know, I know. But I mean, like <laughs> if early. I ever like think about it, like for future, future things, like what I want to do after fighting or whatever. Um, but that's definitely something that I definitely do feel like there's definitely like kind of something in you that switches when you're like ready to go and compete. Is, is it any like pent up anger? No, no, I'm never, I'm not an angry fighter in that sense. I feel like when you fight angry, you fight worse. And you yeah. can't be emotional. You know, I think... I'm just thinking about everything I've been training, everything I want to do, what winning that fight kind of like means for like, I mean, winning, I feel like every fight's like the most important fight. And I always tell myself that no matter like what level I mm -hmm. was, because you need to win that to move up. So I feel like I always kind of like remind myself of that, like winning this fight means whatever else is next for you. It's only going to mean good things if you win. Um, so I think I kind of just like focus on that, focus on my training. And I, I try to stay calm. I mean, I'm a pretty calm person too. Um, so that's kind of easy for me. But I think just being ready to go in there and be ready to go as hard as I can from like the second it starts. Have you ever felt in a one of the recent fights, let's say, that, or I guess, what's the feeling like when you when you know that like your your first game plan is not maybe working, or that you thought you might have the advantage somewhere, and you're like, shit, maybe it's a little bit trickier. Yeah. How do you? I guess how do you analyze that mid fight? Um. Yeah. Is there a specific moment that you felt that? There are definitely moments I felt like that. I feel like I felt like that multiple times in fights, especially in the beginning of my career. Um, making in-fight adjustments is like super crucial. And I feel like that's something that's kind of been a strength of mine. I remember even in like my fight with JJ Aldridge, like she, her lefty was throwing me off a little bit. She was getting like nice body lock takedowns. Like that was definitely throwing me off, but you can't get like frustrated. I think that's like people's number one problem. Like they'll get frustrated in the fight. You kind of have to just like keep flowing and kind of, I think like the less I think, the better I do. I kind of just mm -hmm. let my game flow and then you kind of like find your openings and opportunities. You can't like rush it. You can't think too much. So I feel like when I kind of just let myself flow, I'll I'll be able to find what I need, even if it wasn't exactly what we thought it was going in there. Is it ever debilitating or like, like have you ever felt like you panicked in a fight? Um, No, I don't think I've ever panicked. Because sometimes you can tell if a, if a fighter is, <laughs> is maybe, you're good, yeah. is maybe realizing like it's not their day you know or that or that they're getting beat up in and go <laughs> yeah i'm dying <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> let it all out um like i even had a friend a friend of mine well randy brown you're familiar with randy brown mm -hmm. um yeah, randy brown. good friend of mine and he told me that once he was just so like uh he had a terrible cut and he just knew like mid-second round he's like yeah my, my body's just gonna crumble and that's like and that's like a panic moment you never you never felt that um, nothing I really remember. I remember, like, I do remember, like, <coughs> during fights, like, between rounds, like, knowing I lost that round and then kind of, like, knowing I would need to adjust. Um, but never, like, panicking. No, just kind of, like, having to, like, refocus and, like, get ready for that next round. And when you lose, so you're, you're do you think of in, in between rounds whether you won or lost that round? Is that an active thought? Yeah, yeah. Like, I remember... Yeah, I know even um, kind of with that JJ fight again, I remember coming to my corner. I think the first thing I said is like, oh, I lost that round. And they kind of like ignored me and just got like, I can tell that they weren't like obviously happy with the round. They don't like, I don't like when my coaches like scream at me or anything, but they kind of came in and they're very serious and like, you need to do this, blah, blah, blah. You know, like kind of like adjusting me. Um, but I definitely do think about if I won or lost that round. I think it's kind of just a little bit natural. You only have three rounds in most yeah. fights. So if you drop one, you know you need those next two or you need to finish. So um that is definitely something I think of. I try not to like, I don't think I necessarily panic. I just know I need to like, almost like get my shit together and like yeah. get it done. Yeah. Do you, how do you train 
Like, what's your normal kind of training routine when you're not in camp um, every day? I still train, yeah, like six days a week um, or so. I mean, obviously, when I'm not in camp, it's more flexible. I have to miss a day for something or if I want to do a different training session or do something different, um, I definitely will. But I'm always in the gym. I've That's kind of been like a habit of mine since I was a kid. I started training when I was seven. So it's pretty nuts for me. And I love being in the gym. And honestly, it's my job. So it's not like I have anything yeah. else really to do. Um, and I, I want to, and especially at the point I'm at now, I always, I want to keep improving and um, I don't want to lose any more fights in my career. So yeah, it's always the goal. Do you, during, and so during camp, is it much different? Are you doing multiple sessions a day, I imagine? And Yeah. Um, in camp, I feel like it's just, it's more, it's more strict. Like I'm doing like whatever, my two, three sessions a day, six days a week, like one rest day. And I'm not missing any sessions for anything. Like if something else comes up, like, no, it's like training comes first. Is your, on the rest day, is it, what do you do? Do you just completely lounge? Yeah, I, I pretty much completely lounge. Like I'll go for like walks or like go shopping or something like that. But it's pretty relaxed. Like I'm not doing anything like physical. And you're always, I imagine, eating clean all the time. Oh yeah. Like in camp, um, I, I diet like my eight weeks is like strict training and dieting and what's like mostly what are you mostly eating just protein carbs yeah pro like oatmeal like protein shakes for breakfast and like turkey sweet potatoes broccoli like things like that greek yogurt like ba like basics things that are like you know they're not it's not fun to eat the entire time but it definitely has like makes me feel good and the cut to 25 is easy um i mean it's not yeah, it's not super hard, but it's not super easy either. I definitely have to be disciplined for those eight weeks. Have you had a, a particularly bad cut in the UFC? Um, actually, no. All my cuts in the UFC have been good. I've had notice for all my fights. Um, I'm not big on taking short notice because I don't want to have bad cuts because I don't want to like risk the performance. Um, but as long as I have like my time, my cuts are good. Do you have a nutritionist that helps you with it? Uh, actually, no. I've been I've been doing it all myself. Yeah, yeah I've I've heard I've heard that. Well, I know some fighters they've use nutri they've used nutritionists and then they just kind of just wing it after because they they know the process yeah but um but in a lot of ways i feel like like for if for a championship fight do you think you would still do it that way or you'd bring in an extra person um you know i feel like i've i've got it pretty down good and i feel good training and my weight cuts always go good so i feel like as of right now i don't know if i would do anything different um and if I did, I, I would definitely do like my research on nutritionists. I've seen fighters have nutritionists that still like miss weight. So I'm like, <gasps> like you know, I, I definitely, I've seen it happen. So I'm like, I, I know I've been doing it good on my own. I know, I know the process I've done. So as long as I can do that, I, I feel confident. How much weight do you cut on fight week usually? Uh, usually fight week only like five, six pounds. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. I hear yeah. some, it's like way worse. Yeah. yeah. I think like my last fight week, I got there at like 32. And then by the time I cut, I was like 30. Yeah. Are you in a, you get in a bad mood when you're cutting? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe like an actual water cut. Sounds like yes. Yeah. Yeah. I can be a little mean. I think it's just, it's a lot of stress oh, when you're I actually can't even cutting. imagine. Yeah. It's like gotta be like the worst. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm pretty good. Like during my camp, like dieting and everything, not complaining, but I think like the actual water cut, it's just so, it's so intense, you know, like sweating all that out that, yeah, you see it. The worst parts of you what do you usually walk into the cage at um i think like the last couple of times like 37 or so oh so not is that big for for most girls in your division um, i mean i feel like that's pretty big because it's already like 11 12 pounds up from right. what i weighed in at yeah so that i mean who's the only one that I, the only girl that i think is really seems really big for the weight class would be furo yeah. She's like, she seems like that she could probably fight at 35. She probably has fought at 35, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. I know I know she's a pretty big girl. I don't know what she gets up to, yeah. like, on fight day. Like, I'm sure she probably doesn't get up much more than, like, 40 because that's already, like, 15 pounds. Do you feel Do you feel like you're pretty average in terms of size for, like, you're per, you're perfectly suited for flyweight? I, I feel perfectly suited for flyweight. I feel like even my last couple of opponents haven't even been that much taller than me. I know there are some tall girls, but... I feel like that's the only maybe disadvantage I'd have is I'm not very tall, but I know like physically I have that size. Like if they, if if you became, or when you become champ at Flyway and then the UFC offered you like an egregious amount of money to go to strawweight to double champ it, do you think you would even try it? Um, I don't know if I'd go to strawweight. I feel like I'd almost feel more comfortable going, going up. up. Yeah. Um, yeah, strawweight, I'd definitely have to get a nutritionist. I don't know. I don't know if I'd be myself at that right. right yeah do you feel 
like for people who've never fought or are listening, like mm-hmm. describe what it's like when you don't feel right after a, if you've ever had that after like a cut or that or the what you're describing right now where it's mm-hmm. like I don't know if I'd feel right. Like what does that what does that mean? What does that look like? I think it just. I think my my body would be so depleted and I feel like I'd feel so small that it wouldn't feel like what I feel like in my training. And like, I know what my body feels like at 25. I know what I feel like when I get down to like 35, th- like low 30s. And like, I know I still feel good. And I know that I can kind of like build back up to like closer to my normal walk around weight and that I'll feel like myself. I think if I got that much smaller, well, I don't, I don't know if I'd feel good. I don't know if I'd be like even be there mentally because you'd be so depleted and like your body would feel small. I, I just don't know if that'd be a good decision. What is your who, who's your management? Uh, I'm with KO reps. OK. Yeah. And they have you been with them the whole time in the UFC? Mm-hmm. Yes. And do they like do you guys ever talk about future plans in terms of like potential different weight classes or stuff like that or is not that's not really a conversation right now uh that's not really a conversation right now i think because i've been doing good at flyweight yeah. and I've, obviously i've been making weight and winning my fights so it's kind of that's flyweight's just been the focus right now is there have you fought somebody that came in overweight in the ufc uh no my first fight that i was supposed to have um was at 35 because i took a short notice fight oh, okay uh and she missed weight um, but everybody else has made weight is there ever like a, i'm always curious is there ever a weight that would be a weight miss that would be too bad for you not to take the fight? Uh, I mean, at 25, no, unless like, I know at a certain point, the athletic commission would probably yeah. like call it. But um, but for me, I know I just get more money because they missed weight. So I'm always like, oh, I kind of hope that they missed by yeah. like one pound. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, not for me. Um, For you in terms of like, you know, like you and I are in the same age and I'm thinking like to have that level of discipline and... In a lot of ways, I'm sure that there may be moments that you wish, correct me if I'm wrong, that you could do a lot of the things that most 23 or 24 year olds can do in terms of whether it's take breaks from not being so disciplined, whether it's what we're joking about in the beginning of like going out and stuff like that. Is that stuff that matters to you or not at all? You're just mostly just focused on this one vision. I think a couple of years ago when I was younger, I definitely thought about that. I'd be like, oh, I wish I could like go out or do this and that. But I think like when I remind myself, like, honestly, like how like how blessed I am to be able to do this and like how I'm, how skilled I am at it and that I've always been focused. I feel like it's an opportunity that you only get once in a lifetime and it's so worth it. No amount of going out or anything is worth it. Like I've seen I see other people doing that and it's like I'm not jealous of them at all. I love my life and I love what I do. And there are times when you can have breaks and you kind of have to take them in while you can. Right. Um, and this career is short. You only get to do it for however long, you know. Um, I'm not sure like how long I'll be able to go do it. So I want to take it all in and take the most of it. So I think at this point in my life, I, I don't miss that at all. Do you, so you started training when you were seven mm-hmm. and you started training jujitsu? Yeah, I was doing like no gi jitsu and kickboxing. Okay. And at what point did you know, like, I'm going to do this as a professional? Like, I'm going to, it's going to be my life. How yeah. old are you? Uh, when probably you were beating up the women when you were 12? Around then, because also. How pissed were they? Oh, they were super pissed. Oh, I'd yeah, be fuming yeah. if this little 12 year old came in and beat me. No? I feel like sometimes at competitions, they didn't even know how old I was because I looked a little bit older than I was. Um, but I think the girls at the gym, some, some of them definitely didn't like me. <coughs> um, but I feel like around that time is because that's also when Ronda Rousey was like coming up. Oh, right. And I remember my dad has always been a big UFC fan. He'd always try to get me to watch it. But I wasn't set, set into it. Even though I trained, I didn't want to like watch fights or whatever. Um, but then when Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate were fighting, he's like, oh, look, there's girl fight. And I was like, oh, my God, there's girls doing it. So I remember sitting down and watch. That was like probably the first fight I really sat down and like paid attention. That was like strike force. Um, whatever year that was, that was forever ago. And I remember watching that and being like, oh, I was like, that's so cool. Like, I, I would totally do that. What was it about it? Just being able to beat somebody up or like the, the intricacy of mixed martial arts? Um, you know, I think it was like being able to make that like your job because, you know, like when you're in school, because people are always like, oh, what do you want to do when you grow up? And blah. I think like nothing else really interests me the way that uh, martial arts did. And like, I think learning and getting better and competing. I already was competing, so I, I already knew I liked that. Um, so I think this just combination of everything was like, oh, like, oh, I could do that. That can be like my job. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a pro fighter. That's interesting. Did yeah. you ever feel like weird? Because <laughs> most, you know, especially at that point in time women fighting UFC was pretty new. Um, did you ever feel like kind of like the oddball out because that was your your dream and probably not a lot of young girls, even young boys' dreams at that point in time? You know, maybe 
bit, maybe a little bit. I feel like, uh, like I, most of the schools I went to, they were pretty small. And like, I went to like, <laughs> I kind of went to like the same elementary school from the time I was like in pre-K till I was like in eighth grade. So like, I oh. knew all these kids and I grew up with them. And I was kind of always like, oh, like the karate kid, like the kid okay. that did it. So like, I don't think anyone was like surprised. <laughs> Um, and then the time I was in high school, I was already so, like, I was so focused. I knew that's what I wanted to do. Like from the second I was like a freshman, I was like, I just need to get through high school and then like start fighting. Did people treat you differently? Cause you were the, the karate kid or the, or cause they knew you could, you could, you could fight. Um, I think I was definitely more confident I didn't really get messed with at all, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe when I was like super young, cause it blamed me a little bit, but then I know training definitely helped me with my confidence. I was a super quiet kid, like super quiet. Um, so I think training kind of helped build my confidence and then I think that kind of just reflected in how I like I carried myself so I never really had any when problems. when were, you were quiet from like what ages to what ages um I would say all while I was like all while I was young maybe till I was like hmm. I think once I started training so maybe when I was like maybe not till I was like 10 to 12 ish and maybe when I kind of like started really like being, I don't know, be more confident in myself. Did you, f and so did you feel like there was a direct correlation between that self-confidence and mixed martial arts? Oh, definitely. I think because like just being able to know I can handle myself and having that confidence just made me more confident in anything I did because I knew like I can kind of handle myself and I, if I can get through the training, get through that and competing, I can like handle anything. But when you say like handle myself, was it like just, you knew that like a no girl could fuck with you and you could probably beat up half the guys like was it oh, that yes. mentality yeah like if someone says something to me and like i say something back and they want to fight me like oh we can fight like i'd rather fight you than like talk like back and forth with you you know like i'm more confident in that do you ever get into any fights at school i never did actually surprising yeah i know i <laughs> no, know surprise well I'm, yeah. I'm happy that people are not that stupid yeah yeah no i never did i never it never got that far probably yeah. did want to beat up some some people now uh yeah there's definitely some people i, I could have beat up but stop myself yeah well it's it's crazy too now because like you uh you can't i hope that no nobody looks to you sideways the wrong way and like just seeing that that nate diaz video the other day um yeah. you know some some people are really fucking stupid like they don't get it that it's not a game like mm -hmm. you're you're talking about like trained trained killers in a mm -hmm. sense does that give you I don't know when you're walking on the street does it give you an elevated self of con like level of confidence where you're like damn like i know that there's 80 percent of people that walk in here depending on size obviously i could beat up yeah you know i mean i feel like it definitely gives me confidence and then i think just so so it gives you confidence in the sense for me that i don't care what people say to me and like unless someone's gonna actually like physically attack me i'm not gonna do anything back i'm not gonna like go and attack someone because they say something like rude to me i think it's just kind of like you know that they're doing that to like get something out of you and they want to kind of like provoke you especially like if someone knew who I was and like knew I fight, then they like almost like trying to go out of their way to like kind of damage you in your career, you know? Right. So like, I wouldn't let them do that to me unless like someone's actually coming after me. And if they did, then I know I'm, I could have like hold my own. How different do you think, how do you think like your, your trained martial arts would translate in, in like street fights even, right? Like mm -hmm. how different do you think as like a, I w I'm always curious about this as a fighter, um, how much different, would you or what would your approach be if if you know god forbid somebody attacked Fatima and she, she didn't see him and you had to you had to go take him down uh <laughs> i feel like ideally i'd want to like maybe strike a couple times like hit them with some quick punches and be able to get away like i'd rather not have like cr like a drawn out fight um quick takedown though because the getting taken down on the concrete is not great yeah maybe a quick takedown though if, like i guess it depends on their size too um yeah, maybe a head kick or something. That'd be pretty funny. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to break them down real quick. Um, but I feel like some, because I feel like especially people in the street, like they're not used to getting hit, especially by a professional oh, fighter either. You know what I mean? So I feel like it wouldn't take as much, like as much like strikes as like trying to fight some other fighter that's used to getting hit. Like I feel like you'd be able to hit them and they'd be like stunned. So you'd be able to like get away. Um, or like a quick takedown, especially if they like bash their head on the floor or something. Yeah. yeah like it's not going to take much, you know? I feel like the takedown is definitely the route. Cause then if you're, if you land up on, if you're on top, mm -hmm. then they're probably, their head's probably already bashed against the bashed concrete. It, yeah. They give it their back and like choke them or something. Yeah, I feel like that'd be easy. A little ground and pound. Yeah. Not well. too much. I don't want to break my hands. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. We got to save those. Um, you know, that's a weird thing. Well, I hope you never end up in that situation. Yeah. I feel like you wouldn't. No, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully not. I hope not. I've yet to. So there's definitely there has to have been people that you've wanted to just like smack around sometimes. 
Um, no, in high school, you were in you were, you went to college for a little, didn't you? I did go to college for a went little. Went to Montclair bit, yeah. State. I yeah. think I, I saw for mm-hmm. how long? Um, I think I, I went for like three years or so. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so you almost finished. I, I was, I had like, well, I, I kind of like started because I was fighting already. So I kind of like was taking like less and less classes. I wasn't even like full time at certain points. I was kind of like part time. So I think I got up to like 80 credits or so. This was when you were in Invicta or UFC? Uh, Invicta. Once I got signed to the UFC, I dropped out. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no more of that. <laughs> yeah. It's part, any, any part you want to finish? Nah. No. <laughs> no. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> Did okay. people in your classes know like what you did like when you're in Invicta or? Uh, some of them did like it was funny actually like the last class I took they all knew because it was like a sports like communications kind of class okay. so they all knew I fought so when I got into the UFC it was actually really nice they all like knew and like congratulated me and stuff. that's cool yeah do you and you went for what was your degree yeah it was it was um they had like a long name it was like television and digital media with like a concentration in sports media do you want to do sport anything in commentary or television post post UFC career I do want to do commentating. I think that's something that uh, I've always kind of been interested in. I've done a little bit for like grappling shows, um, like in the area. Um, but it's definitely something I'd want to get more experience in. And specifically UFC or just in mixed martial arts, boxing, like. Oh, I'd love to do it for UFC, like being like a ESPN analysis or something yeah. like that would be like, yeah, that'd be like my dream, like career after fighting. Kind of, well, you could do it like somehow some of these fighters already do it where yeah. when they're out of camp. Who's one of those fighters that does that? I know Justin like Poirier just like and, got signed yeah. to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that'd be kind of cool. That'd be sick. If I could do it while I'm fighting even still, like well, maybe if I'm a little bit more solidified. Um, yeah, I'd do it. But even sure. like the, those, uh, what are the grappling events that are on Fight Pass? Um, um, they have a couple. Yeah, they have a couple. Yeah, no, they I think Amisha be... Tate's done like some commentating for some of those grappling shows. Like I would do it for that, for sure. Do you, I mean... Do you have a feeling of when you would maybe want to, you know, retire, like how long you'd want to have before you get out? Do you want to get out early or late? I I would like to get out early-ish, like maybe if like my early 30s, like see where I'm at at that point. I feel like because I'm already so close and if I can keep on this path, like that would definitely, I'd be have that title soon. So I feel like by my early 30s, I'd be like kind of have that luxury of being able to leave if I wanted to. Do you ever think about like, okay, if I get UFC title, then I want to get titles in other organizations as well no i'm pretty focused on ufc just like i feel like holding that title and defending it as much as you can is probably the most prestigious thing yeah, you can do in mma I agree. yeah especially because at that point too like money wise it follows you as a champ so mm-hmm. there's not even really like the crazy incentives of some of these other organizations you yeah. know yeah i feel like yeah especially win that title defend it a couple times think it'd be easier to get that espn job yeah <laughs> for then- sure <laughs> No, of course, at that yeah, point, yeah. it's not even a question. So I think that's kind of like what I've been thinking. Like in an ideal world, would you retire at 30? Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? A, so it's yeah. like that. It is like that. And like ideally, <laughs> if I could retire at 30 and like have done everything I wanted to do, I would. If I have to stay a little bit longer to like achieve what I want, I'll do that. But if I could retire at 30, I'd do that. So that's interesting. Like, but you but you still consider that you love the sport. Like some people, I've I have a bunch of people that have told me like, I fight, I'm a prize fighter, but I don't love it. Like, I don't love getting hit in the face. Do you feel like you love mixed martial arts? Oh, I love fighting. Yeah, I love competing. Like, yeah, I mean, I guess no one loves getting punched in the face, but I love competing, you know? I um, feel like when you get in there, obviously you don't want to, you don't want to get hurt or injured or anything, but there's nothing more satisfying than like winning a fight. So do you like competing because you like winning or you just, or do you like just proving to somebody else that you're better than them? Or yourself. I think I like yeah, I like proving it to myself. I think I, I love winning. Obviously, I love proving to myself that I'm getting, and I love improving. Like I love watching back fights and seeing that I've improved on what we were trying to improve. Like in previous fights, I think that's that's a big thing for me too. At the highest levels, I'm curious. Like, what does improving actually feel like? Because it's you've been doing, you've been drilling. I mean, doing a yeah. lot of the same repetitions, right? So it's mm-hmm. hard. I mean, you're at the highest of the highest levels. Like, what does that really look like or feel like? I think it's really, honestly, it's the higher level you get. I think it's like little details, right. like keeping your hands up a little better, keeping your stance a little more cut off or square, whatever you need to do, um, transitioning a little quicker, uh, making decisions quicker and faster and just kind of like, or like doing the, exactly what you've been tra- like drilling and training for that opponent. Um, I think it's just, it's honestly little things. Like I think even for me, like in my last fight, it was just kind of like staying long with like Andrage mm-hmm. and not letting her. Or like when she does come in, our plan was like clinch, hit her a couple times and like get her off. So I think it's like little things like that, that it show like improvement. Speaking of that Andrade fight, was it, 
And I was honestly like surprised at how easy you made it look. Cause I, I think Andrade is, you know, she's been at the top for a while. She's been champ. Mm -hmm. Um, does it feel good, especially for somebody that everybody calls like a pit bull or like a bully, right? To, I mean, you fully bullied her. Mm -hmm. Like, did you, did it, did it feel easy? Um, yeah, I feel like it felt like, I guess it's hard to say. I feel like any other fight, like every fight kind of has its challenges. I know when the fight started, I, I felt pretty good. I felt like my, my strikes were working. Um, I didn't feel like I was getting cute too much. You did catch me with a couple that I could... None of them rocked me, but I could feel that they were hard. And I was like, oh, I don't want to eat too many of those because if that hits the wrong wrong spot, it can yeah. go like go bad. Um, uh, and, you know, I mean, I went for a couple takedowns the first round. They didn't really work. So I knew I was going to have to keep setting them up with my strikes. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I guess with, that felt easy is like once I got the takedown, she right. kind of exposed her back yeah. very quickly and didn't defend her neck at all. Um, and I have noticed that in fights sometimes, like when you create scrambles, people kind of like, they'll forget like basic things. Like they'll defend, to, like forget mm -hmm. to like cover their neck or like keep their shoulders tight so they don't get choked as easy. Um, she kind of turned around really quick and I was able to snatch her neck super quick. So that was probably like the only thing I would guess considered like easy. I think, yeah, I think it's, I think that surprised me as well. Cause mm -hmm. it almost feels like, especially her, she's still a very high level jujitsu practitioner. Right. But, um, it is kind of interesting to see how people, they're human, right? Like they mm -hmm. sometimes in moments, like they just forget to do things that they've been yeah. drilling their whole life. How do you rem remember or remind yourself to mind your P's and Q's at every single moment, even if you're, yeah. you know, at the highest level of jujitsu and grappling and mixed martial arts in general. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I feel like it really is a lot of just staying relaxed. It's yeah, it's staying relaxed. I think it is a lot of drilling, so it's like completely um, like natural. Like you yeah. don't have to think about it twice. Yeah. Like maybe they have been doing it in training, but maybe they haven't drilled it a lot. They're doing a lot more just live, not drilling like techniques. I think I see a lot of fighters do that, and then it's kind of hard to do the right things because they they don't have it like ingrained in them to do it right. right. Um, so I think it's just kind of having ingrained in you to do it right, being relaxed, and so you can just do it. Like you don't, you shouldn't be thinking. Are there fighter? Which fighters do you look up to the most in terms of style? Uh, I've always been a big like George St. Pierre fan. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's always been super well rounded. His striking was good. His wrestling was good. His jiu jitsu was good, um, and he always put it together really well. Do you feel like? Do you feel like in MMA? Obviously, it's good to be well rounded, but like being extremely good in the grappling and people I think once Khabib came in really realized the power of being like head and shoulders when it comes to the ground game do you feel like that's true that if you're just head and shoulders in the ground game you're gonna at least get to a very very high level do you feel like that's an, ac an accurate assessment yeah I feel like you could get to a very very high level just because I guess I guess on either whether you're a really high level striker or a really high level uh like grappler um you can get to a very high level you definitely need everything if you want to be like the champ you know um i think of someone like let's say mackenzie dern who has like really high level right. uh grappling she's gotten to like top five i mean she maybe could be champ but you definitely have to like it kind of shows you that you do need to be super well-rounded like it's not just your grappling that's going to get you there but i feel like it's it's kind of like her or who's an, who's a, a good example on the men's side too like even like you know like a ryan hall yes yeah like sometimes or a paul craig when they're just so one-dimensional in that mm -hmm. sense especially when it comes to like basically they're on their back you know they're throwing up submissions off their back the whole time then at that point it also kind of becomes counterintuitive to be that good at one thing and not well-rounded yeah. but i feel like when you have like smothering top control it's like fuck it's like so <laughs> yeah. hard to deal even with like khabib was well-rounded i mean even yeah. in his fight with connor he like almost, rocked him. he rocked him yeah i could have knocked him out maybe if he wanted to um so i think yeah you need to have be good everywhere like he had his striking was very good and then his wrestling and grappling was like above everybody else so i think it's like you could be world class at one thing but you also still need to be very very good at everything else what feels better uh knocking somebody out or submitting them <laughs> that's so hard i think someone asked me that the other day i think um knocking somebody out come on knocking someone out is is i think it's just so because you don't know which shot's gonna do it you know i feel like sometimes mm. like you'll kind of catch them with something i mean i have one knockout like kind of catch them with something um, and then they just fall and you like didn't even expect that shot to be the one that did it and then everyone freaks out It's pretty exhilarating. I would say like a knock is more exhilarating where a submission Submission satisfying because you know like oh, it just it's over. You know, what I mean like I kind of choked yeah. them out. It's done um, But I'd say knock are definitely much more like exciting Have you ever felt like you were rocked in a UFC fight or in any um, fight? I, I wouldn't say a UFC fight, but I know my first Invicta fight um, I fought a girl who's like she was a pretty tall boxer. She won like golden gloves and I think she did like a step back, like right hand, and she just caught me clean. And I remember getting like, 
I remember like my head kind of like <laughs> seeing like two or three of her and had, I just remember like picking my hands up and circling out and I was able to kind of like get my I remember my feet kind of like got a little wobbly a second I was able to get my bearings back um but that was like the only time I was like super rocked in a fight so you really so in that moment you see two or three yeah I remember that I definitely saw is it like in the movies when you see two or three or is it like a different I've never seen multiple <laughs> yeah, so I feel like it's happened twice to me because I remember when I did EBI, I got thumbed in the eye really bad and that oh. made me see like two or three. And then in that fight, I got rocked really bad. And it's like the one in the middle is usually them. And then you'll see like blurry versions <laughs> of them next to it, like on each so side. So you just of them. saw yourself look at the one in the middle? Yeah, so you kind of just look at the one in the middle. That's scary. Remember, yeah, it's simply, I don't know, it's hard to be scared in the moment because it's like obviously you're not completely there. Right. So you just, it's almost fight or flight. Like, you know, okay, I need to get away so I can like reset, you know? <clears throat> um, but yeah, so I basically just knew like instinctually I had to like pick my hands up, circle out and just kind of get my bearings back. And how long does it take to fully recover so you're seeing one again? Uh, it only took a couple seconds. It wasn't oh, okay. like super long. Like I would say. So it's like getting rocked. It's like, yeah, you're just getting rocked. Like I've never been like put down. Like, so I'm not yeah. sure what that feels like. I've been like rocked where I got a little wobbly, had to circle out and kind of like recover. Um, but I'd say only a couple seconds. Yeah. Interesting. And I guess post fighting like on a personal level do you what what do you look forward to the most is it is it commentary is it if having a family if that's something that interests you like what what are some of like the post fighting like what do you hope life looks like post fighting day to day um you know I, I don't know fully I feel like I've thought of like obviously being a commentator and be able to do that um being comfortable having like a nice home wherever I, I guess like once I'm done fighting I won't necessarily have to live like where I live now when like you're champ you're gonna have all the homes yeah where I'm when I'm champ I can do do what I want in that sense um but I don't know if I have a full complete vision right now I think mm -hmm. I I still kind of like pretty focused on what I need to do now um and then I know everything will come so when it's or I guess when it's all said and done UFC wise, or fighting wise mm -hmm. what do you hope that people are remembering Aaron Blanchfield as what, like when they when they th when they think of the name, what are they, what are I, they saying? The goat. I, I definitely want to be the goat. I want to be the goat of like the flyweight division for sure. I definitely want to be like one of the greatest. Kind of like how I talk about George, how like he was so well rounded. I hope people think that about me. And then, even like outside of fighting, he was a pretty humble person and every uh, like that too. So I know I'm, I'm I kind of like I, I feel like I admire him in that sense too. I think that's why I'm a big fan of his. Um, so I, I kind of want to be remembered like in that same way. So let's man let's manifest it really quick. Yeah. What are we today? April like 27th, 28th. It's 27th, yeah. Um, this will come out in a couple weeks, but let's say it's April 27th, 2023. On April 27th, 2025. Okay. What's life looking like? Oh, I'm definitely a UFC champ by then. Um, How many title defenses? Ooh, okay. That's like two years from now. You could probably get a couple in there. Maybe like two or three. Maybe, I don't know, maybe two. How, how often would you fight as a champ? Maybe like once or twice a year. I mean, Valentina was she was pretty active. Yeah, she was pretty active. That's why she. I think she, that's why she racked up so many. She was she was fighting like three, four times a year. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So let's say like three. Three um, title defenses. Yeah, you've already ran through the top three contenders. <laughs> yeah, you've ran through Valentina twice already at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll. I mean, yeah, I guess it depends on who. Yeah, I guess it depends on who you fight. I mean, realistically, it's what it's like. Like, I'd say if it'd be Grasso. Like, I don't think I'd have to get an immediate rematch with Grasso. No. You know what I mean? No. Yeah, exactly. So it's like you can fight. They'd probably people. give her, they'd probably do like, okay, can I make a prediction? Sure. <laughs> Fuck, I think Valentina's going to beat her in the rematch. Really? Yeah, what yeah. do you think? You don't think so? I don't, I, I think I'm like hoping so much for Grasso to just yeah, win okay, again okay, that okay. I don't know. So let's say, they're, and they're not booked, they're not booked yet, right? They're not booked yet, no. So maybe, all right, so let's say that Valentina fights her again. Let's say by the end of the summer. Shit, that means that delays yeah, you Yeah, that's why I was like, ooh, three sounds what, like do, a lot of defenses. Would you want to get, if you could, a uh, fight in between? Or? I, I probably would just to solidify my spot. Yeah. Because I know sometimes, like, if you don't fight for a while, then you yeah. might not get the next title shot, you know? But I will say, as an MMA fan, as an outs as an outsider looking in, it's quite obvious that, like, you're next. Yeah. It, assume, like, basically it was, like, if Valentina won that, you were 100% next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know. That. That's how I Yeah. Felt. Yeah. So then it's just like, oh. But in a lot yeah. of ways, 
then I think what I was also kind of the the sentiment as again as an outsider was that it made that Alexa stylistically for not that I obviously Valentina's um you know very beatable but like I think people probably would have made you a far bigger favorite over Alexa than than Valentina for example mm -hmm. um so in my opinion I think it, it would probably go okay it would probably go like this Valentina <laughs> probably beats Grosso they probably give a trilogy yeah. you fight somebody in between you beat her ass <laughs> and then early 2024 Yes. And then you defend twice in 2024. And then we okay. said April 27th. Tw okay, yeah. Yeah. Just fight okay. early. Just fight just like fight first year. quarter of 2025 and you've got your three title defenses. Yeah, yeah. And then you could even ride off into the sunset then if you wanted. Imagine. Um, would you ever, would you ever yeah. like, okay. Okay. Okay, think about like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you, if, if, if what we just manifested comes true. Yeah. Then technically if you fought a couple times a year, you have like 10 title defenses by the time you're 28. Yeah. Would you retire at 28? Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess it depends on... Everything. It depends on everything. Yeah, it kind of depends on like <laughs> yeah, what no, money you're making, what job you get. <laughs> yeah, I don't... It's it's just... It sounds like it could happen, but it's like it's still also so far yeah. and so many things happen. Yeah. You never know. All right. Well, we manifested yeah. it though. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. And... Well, I got to say, I uh, I want to thank you again for coming on. Yeah. Um. Thank you guys both for trekking out here. And uh, and no, jokes aside, I think that like it's pretty cool to see somebody my age doing what you're doing, um, beating up on grown, grown, grown adults <laughs> yeah. um, and doing it for, for so long. And I think that you have such the right mentality. And so uh, I'm rooting for you. And uh, I can't wait for you to, to be champ hopefully soon. Thank and uh, yeah, keep doing, keep doing your thing. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Thank you Thanks. so much for watching this video. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram at Felix.Levine. And if you have something to say, please leave a comment.